Uh, but this is the one. This is the one that I think I'm taking to heart. Greg Cosell from yesterday. Well, they're missing the best back in the league, and as much as we all like Mason, and he's done a phenomenal job, he doesn't give you the same thing that McCaffrey does, and that kind of back just changes everything about a team. So that's a big, big loss. So, yes, they're not the same there. Um, essentially, the offensive line is exactly the same with the exception of Pooney, who won the job at right guard. So offensively, it's the same people. Defensively, they've had some changes because they lost some people, but they've also replaced some people. Um, Hufanga, um, who actually made a really poor play on the mm. Murray 50-yard touchdown, he got hurt, obviously, and they're now playing the rookie. And when you play a rookie whose strength is probably playing downhill but played predominantly on the back end because Brown is, is better when he plays uh, closer to the line of scrimmage. Now that's something they have to work through. So, yeah, there are always some changes to be made in a given season. Absolutely. But they're, they didn't go from being a really good team a year ago, getting into the Super Bowl, almost winning, to suddenly a team that's no good. There it is. No, I love that. And to help me, Stiney, Evan, I need your help too because – Again, it's about Seattle, but I do wonder in that instance, in that soundbite is, well, if I can just allow, I would say, Greg, if we just talk about Brock Purdy then, so the great Brock Purdy shows up when McCaffrey's on the field because I thought we were looking at something that even if he didn't have McCaffrey, you know, and I've said he's facing stardom in the face, Brock Purdy that is. Super stardom. Yeah, I did say that. So I would just ask him about that component. You know what I mean? And obviously you can assume McCaffrey's going nowhere. He'll be here the next few years. But, Steiny, I mean, right now the implications are, if you look at the numbers for Brock, last year touchdown to interception ratio is 6-6 six, six right now. And if, if Greg and the others can say, oh, that's only because, Steiny, if that, that's only – because of McCaffrey, then that's almost like, well, that's a good pass then, right? That's a good that, – that's the reason. Like, don't judge Brock because McCaffrey's not out there? Nobody's saying that. I don't think you can say that because football has injuries and you got to deal with them. But, you know, it does it, – it, I do think it's interesting the way – it feels like because Purdy didn't play well last week, now we're saying, well, he's six been to okay. Four, I said six to six, Daddy, six to four. Yeah, six to six. You know who's got six touchdown passes and six interceptions? You know who's got that? Gino. No. Who? Who Who would you think wouldn't have that kind of? Oh, uh, Mahomes. Mahomes. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes, yeah, yeah. six touchdowns yeah, and right. six picks. So Undefeated. Yeah. 888-957-9570. Do you agree with Greg Cosell? It's foolish to think that the 49ers went from a good team to a bad team this quickly. And now, he didn't talk about the D, or I, we didn't hear it in that well, soundbite. Because he, he that's about the everything. other half of this enchilada. Well, and that's and I know people might say, well, where did this Steiny come from? But I just am looking at the San Francisco 49ers, and I get their two and three, but I see two losses there that I'm putting into the outlier category. They didn't make a play when they needed to. And who's I that? Think the Rams I, and the Rams and the uh, Cardinals. All right. I think they deserve to lose to the Vikings, but they they gave away. They've got to feel like they gave away two games, and if they feel like that and they come out tonight and win, I think you put at least one of those two losses behind them. Yeah. Uh, J one is in San Francisco. What's up, J one? How you doing, man? Hey, good morning, guys. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. Yeah. Game day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I just want to add on, and we just need to motivate our team. We got all we need. We don't need nobody here. We got some team. We can run it. It don't matter who it is we face. We got this. We got it on the street. The faithfuls are here. We just got to motivate them. Thanks for the call. Appreciate it, Jay. Well, uh, I love Jay one, Stoney, but we heard the soundbite uh, from Fred Warner saying he, he shouldn't have to give speeches, motivational speeches at this point. You know what time it is. They're two and three. So I'm just bringing that up because Jay mentioned motivation, but the best player on the defensive side of the ball playing like it said, you know what, Stoney? To hell with some speeches and words. We got to go out there and play. We got to go out there and hit and be vicious. You want to hear about what Cosell said about the red zone issues. I would issues. love to. The red zone. 
Because this is something we've been harping on. This is where McCaffrey certainly is a factor. Because there's normally when these things happen, there's not just one reason, as you guys know. Um, I would say it resulted from an inability to run the ball in the low red zone, meaning 10 yards and in. Uh, there were snaps in which there was less than stout pass protection at times. Uh, Purdy at times, I thought, broke down in the pocket a little too soon. Mm -hmm. And I thought there were examples where there was strong coverage by the cards and he didn't have the timing and rhythm throw that he anticipated having. So there was one play in particular that came with 16 seconds remaining in the first half when Kittle broke wide open on a stick nod, but Purdy felt inside pressure. Uh, we can debate whether there was truly pressure. Only he could tell you what he felt. Um, I wasn't sure there was truly pressure, and normally he stands there and delivers, but that would have been an easy touchdown because Kittle broke wide open. So there's multiple reasons, but this week was very problematic in the red zone, and that was a, a big factor in why they lost. He's so I've never heard the term low red zone. It's the low red zone. <laughs> wow. It's clearly, the that's the 10 in it. Yeah, the low funny. red zone. The low red zone. And I can't truly tell you what he felt, but, yeah, that was a throw I'm sure Purdy wanted to have back. They would have got him in the end zone. Kittle caught it, but his momentum took him out of bounds. But I'm looking for a bounce-back game just from Purdy in regard to his accuracy, too, Stoney, because that wasn't, a, like you said, the lead to show. That wasn't a normal Brock Purdy. Just from the jump, the first pass to Debo was an incompletion, and Debo was open. Hey, uh, I just remembered. There was a play in Sunday's game that we didn't talk about, but oh my gosh, was it almost a monster mistake. A play? We talked about Kittle getting pancaked on we, the We did not talk about this play right. that I can remember. And I want to know wanna, what made you remember it. Uh, it was Greg right Cosell now. jarring okay. my memory when he when he was talking about the red zone, et cetera. I got to get this. I got to make sure this is right. First but, half or second half? First half. I'd, you know. Spadone, are you listening? <laughs> no. Shoot. I just wanted to bring some other people in yeah. to see if they, they caught it, too. Well, I'm here. But, yeah, I know. Let me get it. Let me get, right. Here we go. You ready? Mm -hmm. Here it is. This was almost unbelievable. 49ers have third and seven at the seven. They run a play. Purdy throws to Jennings, and the clock stopped at one second. <laughs> one yeah. second. Yeah, 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 yeah. That play yeah. easily could have ended up being the last play of the first yeah. half. And they don't even get a field goal there going into halftime. And all, he cut yeah, that yeah, so close. Yeah. And even Brady was like, oh, my God. What, dude, boy, well, let's what say a it, break. Stanley, they got lucky on that. Well, Because that ain't how it was designed. That, yeah, could you imagine? I don't, I don't know if you get that extra second on the road. Man, wow. Uh, he, he, on the road. That, like, that would have been a oh, calamity yeah. in terms of clock management and blowing it. 888-957-9570 mm -hmm. uh, is the number. Good and, recollection uh, on that. Benefit of the doubt. Are you giving it to the Niners or not? And if you're not, why? I think it's easy if you give them the benefit of the doubt. Why? One reason I do is because they've, they've been pretty good the last few years, and I'm on board with Cosell. I don't think they got this bad this fast. But what if those guys he's talking about, mainly McCaffrey, let's just, Stani, what if he doesn't come back and this is what I it is? I still think then? they'll win 10 games. Mm, do, you right. want, do you think they won't? Wow. I, I would. I think they'll still wow. win 10 games no wow. matter when or if McCaffrey wow. comes back. Now, that's, now you're really going all in. Because, you know, I hear Greg, but he's talking from the premise of McCaffrey's going to come back and the ailments will be, you know, rectified. But if he doesn't for some reason, then where are we at? And the confidence level, that's all. We still should be a playoff team. That's the way I right. feel and, if I'm a 49er And you know fan. what, Stanley? I still feel like, to that point, they should be better in the red zone even without McCaffrey. And maybe they will be. Mm. They go three for three tonight, all of a sudden they're back up in the middle right. and nobody's talking about it. 888-957-9570. Uh, Are you giving the Niners the benefit of the doubt? They've started slow before. They've rallied before. They've made deep runs from this position before. If you are, I got to believe that the track record's important. It is for me. But if you don't, what are you seeing that leads you to believe these things aren't going to be as correctable as we think? 888-957-9570. Coming up in 10 minutes, Warren Moon, uh, former quarterback for the Seahawks, former quarterback for the Oilers. 
and he will join us at about 10.30. All right. At 1 o'clock, know your foe. Yeah, this is great. Know your foe. Seattle. We'll be we'll be seeing how much we know about Seattle, and I think we can, you can throw the Pacific Northwest in there. They're the only team up there in the Pacific Northwest, so we could do that. But let's go to Wallace. Wallace is in Sacramento. Hey, Wallace, what's going on, man? How you doing? Yo, yo, what's good, man? Hey, man. Man, I love you guys' show, by the way, man. Just much props, man. Love the show. Thank you. Um, I just want to know as a Niner fan, like, I, I want to do a heat check. All right. You know, so, um, you know when you got to, like, if you have a good quarterback, they kind of, like, overcome a lot of the deficiencies you have mm-hmm. in your offense. Do you feel like we have that at Rock? You mean somebody who can win you games when you don't play well? What if I told you I don't yeah. know? I'm still undecided. Okay, okay. What do you think? That's what kind of where I'm at right now. I'm just trying to figure that part out. Like I'm like, can he overcome the things that we don't have right now and get that part done? You know, like that's the only thing. But I'll tell you one thing. Only only reason I look forward to Sundays at this point is just Fred Warner and Brock Purdy. Mm. You know. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Um, I mean, Bosa should be in that mentioned in that, but he's got to step it up. Yeah, I just when I and that's I, you too. I'll be honest. It. That's that's what I'm uh, basing a lot of my conviction on. And I know we, we'll go back and forth a million times because there are plays you have to make to win games, and they haven't made plays when they've needed to. Yeah, I think they will. Yeah, I think the next time. That a play happens like right, somebody's going to catch that ball Ronnie Bell dropped. Uh, I think Brock Purdy does have a game-winning drive in him if the team's down. But I think the defense has a stop in them when they most need it. But again, they haven't done it up to this point, but I'm going to – I choose to believe that they're they're going to start making more winning plays and the wins will follow. Yeah. I was listening to the guys this morning, Scotty. They used oh. our bit about uh, calling the who you calling out, who is it on, and the fans went crazy, and so did Butch and Bonte. Like Scotty, there was a there was a litany of names, like you know, like you're right, and I'm being proactive here. Let's just say they win tonight, Scotty. Yeah. You're three and three, and yes, even sir. then, I can understand the diehard of diehard 49er fans still feeling like, you know what, guys, that still ain't good enough. Well, it's not, but they'll be in first place. Well, assuming the Cardinals lose and the uh, Rams lose, and they don't have a tiebreaker with those two teams, but your boys, your boys, uh, you your boys, good. still optimistic. Uh-huh. Yes, yeah, and you're usually not. What are you talking about? You're usually negative. I'm realistic, practical, and pragmatic. I'm not a dreamer. You're right about that. And pessimistic. No. Realistic. Stiney, you're Dr. Pessimistic. Realistic. 